All right, everybody, we are ready to start putting our paint on our countertop. So we left off um, with our first coat of Dixie Belle's Slick Stick Bonding Primer. Uh, we did one coat, we let that dry for a couple hours, and then we rolled on our second coat and we let that dry overnight. I also filled in uh, a little bit of the, um, the little uh, marks, the little holes that are in the granite. So we have a completely primed surface that has sat um, overnight and we're ready to paint. Uh, what we want to do now is, um, I don't know if your house is like ours, but we, we have dogs and cats and this has sat overnight. So dust has probably fallen on it or hair has probably gotten on it. So we want to make sure we have a super clean surface. We're going to take a tack cloth. Um, if you're not familiar with these, you can get them at Home Depot or Lowe's or any hardware store. And it's just kind of a tacky cloth that's going to pick up any dust particles, hair, anything that might be laying on the surface that we do not want to have um, under our paint. So we're just going to, going to take this off and we're just going to run this along the edge or along the top. And this may not sound like a big deal to some, but you notice how she's just going in one direction. She's not going back and forth. <clears throat> and the reason you don't want to do go back and forth like that is because if dust builds up on one side and doesn't get stuck to the cloth, all you'll do is you'll push it to one side and then when you go back the other way, you'll leave it in a pile that you won't even see uh, on one side. So she's going to try to go the complete distance, one to the other. <laughs> if she can she's reach going the for distance. it. <laughs> and all these steps may seem, you know, unimportant or minor. Trivial. Trivial. But they're all important. If I was painting a picture frame that was going to be on the wall, you know, <laughs> probably not such a big deal with all this stuff, but this is your kitchen countertop. So uh, you want to do a good job. Okay. Uh, we're using Dixie Bell's silk all-in-one mineral paint. This is the color wharf. You're going to notice as we get through this process and as we come to completion that you're really not going to see this color um, as it is on our base coat, okay? It's, uh, it's, a, it's a medium gray, but the finished part really doesn't look anything like this, okay? Because we're gonna lay this down two coats to get a good solid base coat, and then we're gonna do some blending with uh, a, a tone of white in the silk paint too, to make, give it that kind of cement look. Um, so it'll, it'll look a little different. All right, this is a brand new jar. Um, I had a little bit left in a jar that I had opened and I used it on those two pieces of the countertop and then I ran out of course. So brand new jar so you can see what silk is like from the moment we open it to the moment we put it on. Let me put this out. Okay, so remember silk is an all-in-one mineral paint. It's not a chalk paint. It has a um, built-in blocking primer, not a bonding primer like we use with the slick stick. So uh, if we were painting a mahogany bookcase that we think might have some bleed through because of the uh, tone in the wood, this would be the right blocking primer to use, okay? It's not for slick surfaces. But the fact that it's in there, it doesn't hurt. You know, it, it's not going to make a difference in our project. There's also a built-in top coat, which is kind of an eggshell-like sheen. Uh, so not quite matte, not quite um, satin. It's probably in between matte and, and matte. 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 <laughs> We're just going to combine you created matte your and own, satin. You created your own sheen. I did. Matte. I like it. Um, so yeah, it's kind of an eggshell kind of sheen, uh, low, low sheen finish. It's not enough to protect our countertop though. Okay, if you were doing um, cabinets, it's probably fine. You could always add an extra layer of poly over it. Um, for furniture, it's absolutely fine. It's washable, it's UV resistant. We did our front door 
in silk, um, gosh, over a year ago, and it is, it's like the day I painted it, so it's gorgeous. So for all that, it's good. Uh, I need a paper towel. Sorry, guys. Hold on. <laughs> but because we're doing our kitchen countertop that is going to get a lot of abuse, or use, <laughs> maybe some abuse, uh, we're, we're going to put several, probably three to four coats of uh, a poly over it. Okay, I am using a sponge to put this on. You could roll it. You could um, <clears throat> brush, it. brush it. It doesn't matter how you put it on, but the look that we want to get is that kind of concrete cement look. So uh, we, we kind of want that textured uh, pattern in it. Now, you're going to see when we get two coats of this on, this is an amazing self-leveling paint. So even though we're pouncing, when it dries, it is, it's going to be like we sprayed it with a professional sprayer. Okay, it's going to self-level very nice. It's going to be nice and smooth. Once we start bringing our other color in is when we're going to start getting that little bit of a texture. So uh, this sponge is not a Dixie Belle sponge. This is actually um, Heirloom Traditions. And I, I love this sponge. It's a little bit bigger than the Dixie Belle Blue Sponge. And it's got this nice little um, handle. Uh, but I like the big surface area and I like the density of it. So it just really worked perfectly for this project. So here we go. We're going to dip a little bit in. So we start our paint, right? You always want to start, especially when there's primer and sealer in your paint, because you want to get all that consistent. Don't shake it. Yep. Don't, no need to shake. Just start. And we can go pretty heavy on here and silk, silk dries fairly fast. So, uh, we we want to be real careful, especially when you're pouncing, that you don't um, start pouncing as it's drying and start actually pulling it off your surface, okay? You're just kind of um, shooting yourself in the foot at that point. So we're going to put it on. You can even just like rub it on first just to get it on, and then we're going to start pouncing. You will definitely get your arm <laughs> workout here. We're not going to get full coverage on the first coat. So do not worry about seeing some of your slick stick coming through. That's okay. There's going to be at least four layers of paint on here. By the time we're done, you will not see any slick stick. And if there's a lot of kind of gloppy pounce marks, just kind of lightly go over them. I'm pouncing pretty hard at first to get the paint on, but then I'm lightly pouncing to smooth out the texture on it. And I, I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not, but it looks like there's little bumps all over Watch it. Watch your, watch your shirt. Those are gonna completely go away uh, with this first couple coats of paint. It's gonna self-level, meaning it's all gonna smooth out. Again, I'm going kind of kind of heavy here, and then I'm gonna go back. I got the sniffles today, so apologize if I'm sniffling. And you're going to see as you start going over your, your rows, uh, you, you're going to see this kind of mark. Don't fret over that too much. That is going to go away once the paint starts drying and self-leveling. Twice now I've put my finger into the camera shot. Why are you doing that? Because I'm not used to this phone. <laughs> <laughs> the camera's so close to the edge. Again, this is just the first coat, but we're gonna have the same problem again because we talked about it a little bit with uh, applying the primer. Uh, with granite 
you have you're gonna have these little divots and and cracks in it and you know it's not a perfectly smooth finish so the paint is not going to fill those holes it'll feel better than the primer did because as we put the primer on we ended up filling some of those holes with some extra with some extra primer and we're, but not we're gonna have to make sure that all those little divots are uh, are filled with paint we're not painting out of the jar she's not painting out of the jar she couldn't if she wanted to because she can't fit, fit that sponge in the jar now the blue sponge from dixie bell does fit in the jar so if you end up using that don't be tempted just pour out your paint into a, a plate and you notice Pam didn't pour an excessive amount in there. Just a little bit, and she's gonna use it before it starts drying. If you pour a lot into the plate, it may end up drying in the plate. So we'll do a little bit more here, and then I will finish off camera the first coat uh, with, with silk paint. You want to give, depending on your climate, your humidity, et cetera, a minimum of two hours in between. And the reason for that, the way silk dries is from the top down. So it's gonna feel dry on the top, but underneath it may not be completely dry and you as you pounce down you pull up and you're you're just going to pull your paint right back up so don't do that let it dry minimum of two hours if you can give it four even better but if you can't um if you're kind of in a you know 70 degree climate controlled house you should be fine in two hours so we're going to um, we're going to pause there. I'm going to finish the counter, and this will be a good judge for you guys too. I'll I'll measure the countertop surface area so you can if you want to do this to your own countertop, you can see how much paint it's actually going to take uh, to to get it done. So uh, we'll see you back after our first coat.